In my previous video, I covered the history of strawberry shortcake and touched on every iteration of strawberry shortcake throughout time. But I wanted to really focus and dive deep into the original inception of strawberry shortcake. And there's no better place to start than the beginning. Strawberry Shortcake was a tiny little girl that lives in a shortcake inside of a strawberry garden. The movie starts with the sun narrating the small little world they live in, as well as the primary antagonist, the peculiar purple pie man. And his ultimate goal is to get berries from the strawberry garden. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a scarecrow when you have a terrifying tree that growls like a bear. I mean, gosh, that would kind of freak me out if I was watching this as a kid. <laughs> I want those berries. Wait, but yeah, why don't they give him some? They have a whole garden full of them. Is is Strawberry Shortcake actually hoarding resources to control the strawberry market in order to maintain economic control and monopolize the berry industry? Or, or maybe the pie man is just a jerk, I don't know. In other news, we got Huckleberry Pie, based off Huckleberry Finn, who seems to be very lackadaisical and lethargic. And you got Blueberry, of course, and Plum Pudding, who used to be a boy before they changed it down the line, and Raspberry Tort and the baby apple dumpling, which this is kind of like the only time you'll see the apple dumpling. She writes me notes only I understand. It said... It's Strawberry's birthday and they're doing the classic trope of having to avoid her in order to prepare a surprise party and end up hurting her feelings in the end, which... Like, I don't understand why anyone would do this. Just say happy birthday. Don't traumatize her for Pete's sake. So the purple pie man, wait, they're the same size? I thought the pie man would be a normal sized human. He would need literally a single strawberry to make a pie. So the pie man is trying to come up with a way to give her a watering can that never runs out of water. Turns out never ending water can be a little problem. Just ask the people on the east coast during hurricane season. Never ending water ain't all that much fun. So now everyone is getting flooded. Which, wouldn't that kill the strawberries? I don't think the pie man thought this through. What do you want from us anyway? Every last berry in Strawberry Land. Oh, so he wants to hoard all the resources to control the strawberry market in order to maintain economic control and monopolize the strawberry industry. He really is a villain. And then they just give him the strawberries. Like, did he promise he'd fix the water? Oh, oh gosh, I guess he did. And then the sun grants a wish because apparently he can do that, I guess. And so he just summons up all the big mean scary trees in order to fight the pie man. Strawberry tattled to her older brother and got him to beat up her bully and they destroy his home and they force him to sign a surrender contract. Thus ends the shortest berry war in history. We'll be friends with you. After all I tried to do to you? Well, of course. I mean, you're now contractually obligated to be a good guy. So now you gotta be a good guy with the other good guys unless you want to fight this in court. But given that you got no more berries, I doubt you could afford it. There's a good side to everyone. Oh? Uh, what's good about me? You're good at losing! Get bit, punk! And thus ends Strawberry's first adventure, filled with property damage, warfare, and legal court proceedings. Very child-friendly. J.R.R. Tolkien got the idea for the ends from Strawberry Shortcake. True story, just believe me, don't look it up. Mailman, your snail mail is here. In her second adventure, Strawberry wins a contest in Big Apple City and needs to go all the way to the city to compete in a televised bake-off event. We're already expanding the world. Gosh, I appreciate the world building. And apparently the pie man got his house rebuilt and he's also going to compete in the bake-off, but everything is okay. He's a good guy now, right? Turns out you can relapse when you're evil. Happens all the time. Turns out you need rehab and not legal ramifications in order to truly reform. But it's fine. The butterfly eats an imaginary ice cream and so they break out. Okay, sure. I'm not gonna ask questions. She gets kicked out of a hotel and starts having a mental breakdown as you do. She decides to sleep on a bench in the park when she meets Orange Blossom. Oh, so Orange isn't from the 
berry garden. I guess that's why she's not named after a dessert. Them city folk are all named after flowers, all trendy and such. It's no surprise they become fast friends. The pie man made it impossible for them to go to Orange's house, but don't worry, the racially insensitive gopher comes to help. So he digs them an underground tunnel to Orange's place. So Orange was an artist, Lemon Meringue is a narcissistic model. Goodness, the origins of these characters really differed from what we know of them today. What we don't get to see as much is Tea and Honey, an English stereotype. Charlie, ho! Dip, dip and all that! Oh, pip, pip, cheerio, mum's the word, Bob's your uncle, apples and pears, teas and crumpets, governor, can't you tell I'm British? Time for the Bake Off, and we have Coco Nutworth hosting the show. I get the pun, but I can't help but thinking, Nutworth? Hasn't aged well. I guess coconut milk has a different meaning for him. Someone's been tampering with my ingredients. Instead of milk, I've got chalk water. I feel like this is more the showrunner's fault than anything else. How did all that get through the production team? Oh, wait, there's only one person running the whole show. Okay, never mind. You are growing sleepy. Very sleepy. Oh, yeah, sure. The Pie Man has magic hypnotizing powers that he only decided to use now, and this is the only time you will see him use. What was I thinking? <laughs> so he just hypnotizes the host into having the Pie Man win, which, if he could have done that the entire time, why did he even bother trying to prevent Strawberry Shortcake from showing up to the competition? Anyway, they complain enough for the host to try the food and change his mind so that now Strawberry wins. Happy ending! I also want to see a list of all the weird powers that the Pie Man somehow has. And all the new friends she made in the big city decide to go home out to the country with her in Strawberry Land. If anything, all I'm happy about with Big Apple City is that now I know why Orange Blossom isn't named after a dessert. Wait, Lemon Meringue is still a dessert. Actually, all of them are still kind of a, a dessert. And she's, and they're from the city too. Okay, well that doesn't answer anything actually. Now I'm just more confused. They do the smart thing and decide to focus a little bit on their pets because cute little kittens and puppies help sell toys. If I could get a plush of custard, I'd pay big money for that. Or really any of the animals from this show, they're all adorable. So there's a pet show and the pie man is just going to kidnap everyone's pets so that only his crow is entered and wins by default. And we get to meet Sour Grapes, the hot mama that's an old partner of pie man. And she's back. Don't know why or where she went. She's just he here, don't ask questions. This is also the introduction of Angel Cake. She just moved to Strawberry Land because apparently everyone wants to move there now and she doesn't have a pet. And she's very sad that she's so lonely. Boo hoo hoo. I'm on a diet. Then how come you're eating candy? I always say, if you don't think about it, the calories don't count. Hey, I know someone where that actually works. She doesn't think about eating and forgets to actually eat something. My name's Custard. You're new to Strawberry Land, aren't you? Oh, so they can talk now? Can they talk talk or can they only talk to each other? We have Yowie the skunk who wants to enter the pet show but doesn't have a kid so she can't join. I think this is hilarious. Pie Man and Sour Grapes have their pets seeing in the competition and then they find the phonograph and realize they've been lip syncing just like Mariah Carey on Christmas Eve. And so they go, OMG Strawberry, they caught us. Since clearly Strawberry helped them cheat. I mean, it's her phonograph. If they can't win, they can at least make sure Strawberry can't win either. This is a bribe. <laughs> so then she cries. And then she sings with Yowie. Now she feels all better and starts chewing out the pie man. And so she threatens him with annoying him with berry talk. You know, like, that's very bad. And he just gets annoyed enough to where he admits that he set her up. Yowie wins the pet show because she was nice. And then Angel Cake says, hey, you're my pet now. Predictable, but adorable. And that's it. That's the pet show special. Hope you enjoyed that because that's all you get. They changed how the sun looks. And Strawberry Shortcake is moving out. Not moving out of Strawberry Land. She's just upgrading her house. Oh my God, it's also... 
I don't even know. They have a slideshow where they show off more racial stereotypes. There is a Chinese character named Almond Tea. I can give you a couple seconds to think about why that may be not the most appropriate name. It's not a bad name. Could be better though. The 80s was definitely a different time. How about we just have an American character named Burger Cola? Actually, no, we would actually probably love that character. He would be our Speedy Gonzalez. However, her pet is named Marzipanda. That is the best name in the entirety of Strawberry Shortcake. I don't, I don't care what you say. Ask. That's incredible. So they get a pass. I can excuse racial insensitivity if their pet's name is cute. In case you couldn't tell, the production company changed and that means more money was injected into the animation. Everything is so expressive, it's a little creepy. They made the pie man look like Crash Bandicoot. I'm realizing now that I'm extra mad they changed sour grapes in the newer shows. You're telling me you got rid of her being a MILF? That's just criminal. Some designs also got updated along with some voice actors being changed. Behold, Strawberry's new home. What is real estate like in Strawberry Land? How do they make money? The more I think of things, the more questions I have. Surprise, surprise, all of Strawberry friends from around the world come to join her housewarming party. There's a caramel flan made the Mexican way by sweet burrito and cafe au lait. I will say that Cafe Ole and Sweet Burrito is actually kind of clever. I mean, come on, Cafe Ole and Burrito because it's like a tiny burro, burro, how are you say it? Like the word for donkey and ito is just like teeny tiny cute. That's good stuff. Hats off to whoever came up with that. You know, it took me a second, but I think I like this more expressive direction for the animation. Strawberry hasn't really lost her small and cute look. All the while, Pie Man is just more fun. It's jarring, but I think it was the right move. Pie Man and Sour Grapes steal all the goodies from Strawberry's friends from around the world in order to make the ultimate cookbook. And I guess they'll sell it or something, I don't know. They didn't really say what they plan to do with it. They just want to make a cookbook. Arancho, then Holly Aren't you forgetting someone? I could never forget my purple partner in crime. And snake dregs. <laughs> Strawberry teaches Pie Man's crows to do berry talk in a song and they just repeat it over and over again. And once again, the Pie Man gets so annoyed he gives up and returns the goodies. I mean, you'd think they'd figure out to just put earplugs in him, but the goodies get stuck on a bunch of bottles. They work together to get it back. Everything is okay again. Back to partying, the end. All in all, that wasn't bad. A little cute episode teaching kids to be more accepting of different cultures. It wasn't done well, but whatever. Pfft. We got better at it eventually. The pie man being foiled by berry talk is stupid though. Apparently the pie man is freaking out over some monster. Plum Pudding comes back from her hormone replacement therapy and is now a girl. Good for her. Also, there's Peach Blush and the Baby without a name. Hmm. The character that transed their gender is really good at math. 10 bucks says they also program. Now all we need is for her to either play Magic the Gathering or Warhammer. Okay, quick tangent. I had a teacher. She wore a trans flag button. Some kids over off in the distance were talking about transgender people. And my teacher taught us that there are always exceptions in biology and that it doesn't always follow hard and fast strict rules. And all of that went over my head until one day I was in lab talking about music to my, you know, lab mates. And I was talking about the band Korn. And when I mentioned Korn, her head popped up and said, blood for the blood god? Oh, no, 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 not, no, I'm talking about the band, not the character from Warhammer. Wait a minute. They all go camping, the baby sneaks off, and they wake up to her missing, find and find a giant footprint. So the monster must have eaten her. Oh, wait, this is a kid's show. The monster must have kidnapped her. That should keep the show appropriate for kids. The baby gets stuck in a hole and meets a uh, hippo? What is that? Oh, oh, is that the monster? They find her and she introduces them to Big Boot, the last potential pet. And the pie man traps him and steals him away to put him in a circus. In order to get him back, everyone animates a tree to create an even more horrifying monster. I don't know why you had to do that when the sun can summon an army of Ents, but sure, whatever. 
anything other than berry talk. But I still don't have a name. I'm sure that someone somewhere has just the right name for you. Are you kidding me? Where is her parents? Why is this hard? Just throw out names and pick one. She needs any name, even if it's just a nickname. You're not even going to resolve the big overarching problem? What am I, a joke to you? You know what's a joke? This episode. Screw you. Garbage, zero out of 10, certified rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. At the end of the day, the lesson is that we are truly the monsters. Human greed and our pursuit of that greed is what turns us blind. And we can't stop ourselves from worsening the lives of innocence. Just like sour grapes and the pie man kidnapping an innocent child to pursue their own personal gain. Or maybe the lesson is to name your children, dang it! The last of the 80s animated specials, Strawberry and her friends are having a garden party because what else do you do when you live in a garden? Wow, Banana Twirl, another another new character. At least this one it has a name. Oh. Oh. I'm the berry princess and I'm looking for my berry kids. What? Yeah, so there's a berry princess now and apparently these are berry kids, which are somehow different from regular babies, I guess. I kind of appreciate how the CGI animated one made the berrykins into little berry creatures for no other reason than just because these just, they look like berries whose mom dressed them up for a photo shoot. They look like babies that are just dressed up. Pie Man and Sour Grapes are polluting the air with a bad perfume where they literally combine all the food they can think of into one cauldron. Now everything smells like burgers and pizza. Oh no. How terrible, I, I don't get it. I mean, that's not bad smell. It's not great, but this is very tame. The crow kidnaps literal children. Or wait, do, do they count as children? How do Berrykins age? They could be 30 years old for all I know. Who is this? You got yourself a smoking hot MILF that lives with you 24 seven and you go after the girl who's less than half your age. Ugh, typical. The princess uses his stupid horniness to convince him to stop polluting the air. You pathetic purple pea brain. I think you meant to say pervert. They use the berrykins to make their perfume actually, you know, you know, perfumey. And even though this is technically forced child labor, at least this would fix the smell uh, the smell problem. Maybe just delay saving them for a second. This will fix our first problem really fast. So Strawberry drops the Strawberry Berrykins because that one didn't get captured for some reason. And she basically solos them, just starts goofing around and lets the pie man be the idiot that he is until it clogs their scent system. And then lets Strawberry Shortcake inside to save the rest of the Berrykins. The princess makes the cloud smell smell like berries and it rains good smells. So everything is all better now, I guess. I still don't really see the problem. And then they have uh, the garden party with the princess. I really must be going. And I'd like you and your friends to watch over the little berrykins for me. You're just going to abandon your children? To be cared for by other children? This is all backwards, what is going on? What? Uh, uh Oh. I'm at a loss for words. That is just the oddest episode of them all. The creative team really just didn't give two flips when writing this one. It's like the writing just got worse and worse as the series went on. Who thought of this? Why did you think of this? Okay, well the Berrykins episode aside, the origins of Strawberry Shortcake started off pretty cute. It was all very memorable, for better or worse. It's clear to see why this show stuck in the minds of all who watched it, for better or worse. It was nice watching all of the TV specials and getting to see the inception of all these classic characters. If nothing else, I can clearly see Strawberry Shortcake inspiring the minds of every young person who watched this show at the time. It was adorable, until it wasn't. But what do you think of classic Strawberry Shortcake? Do you think there will be nothing like it? Or do you think it was a good foundation, but what we have now may just be a little better? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay beautiful and keep playing.